Hello to the first Meet Sector 7 episode. My name is Rinzo and I'm a founder of Sector 7. Today I'd like to talk about one topic uh, which generates some confusion and some discussions on the internet. And this subject is red teaming. Um, is it something you know different from penetration testing or is it just a buzzword and it's completely the same thing? Or maybe there is something really unique in red teaming. So, so a few weeks back, I've seen um, I've seen a tweet by uh, by Josh uh, Josh Bates, who's an author of a well-known backdoor factory and Ebola projects. So Josh posted that this tweet on Twitter uh, quote: "Apparently, Windows network pen testing is now called red teaming." How good is your red team if there is no Active Directory against a multi-client uh, multi environment with no apparent central management and no way to, be, to move laterally?" End of quote. So I disagreed and uh, that you know network pen, pen testing is the same thing as red teaming. And I posted some comments back to Josh. But then I decided to talk more about what red teaming is and uh, to be more specific, how I understand red teaming, okay? Uh, it's not an official definition. Uh, you might have your different, you know, different experience, different opinion, that's perfectly fine. But I'd, I'd like to share with you how we define red teaming uh, when we work with our partners and our customers and especially blue teams. So to explain the concept, uh, I will use a simple analogy. So let's imagine that you are a bank manager and, and I mean like real bank, okay? Uh, with a building, with some clerks, like guards, uh, like tellers, uh, with a vault with money from, from your customers. And now as a bank manager, uh, you should be managing your potential risks and ask yourself the question of security of your bank. Okay, so you can actually ask your uh, ask yourself different security questions, and and two two example questions are on the slide. So, can you or can someone break into the bank through any window on a ground floor? That's one question, and the other question, or the other type of question is, can anyone steal the money from the bank? Okay, and these two questions are important and invalid uh, but in a nutshell they address different problems so the first question is about the condition of your so to speak physical security measures so let's say the bars in, in the windows or how robust your uh, your walls are um, and these are perfectly like valid concerns okay the second question is more, I would say, holistic. Okay, so it tries to take a fifty thousand feet view and address more generic problem. Um, and it is like, is it safe to keep uh, the money in your bank? Okay, uh, it, this question doesn't, and actually, yeah, this question doesn't specify what kind of you know any technical or non-technical aspects of your bank. So. You're not only uh, measuring like physical aspects of, of that. Um, and it, what, is, what is interesting that the answer to the, first, uh, to the second question is something that real, uh, real bank robbers uh, try to find. Okay? So in the cybersecurity terms, the first question is related to penetration testing or pen test. Uh, we have limited scope and we try to find as many vulnerabilities in that scope as possible, okay? So we are more control centric, so to speak. The second question is for red teamers and so they don't have any constraints on the scope uh, for the exercise and they, they are, uh, as we call it, objective oriented. So in our case, it's like to steal money, that's the objective. Mm, and it doesn't matter what kind of method they will use to achieve that objective. That's the key difference. Um, 
so but okay that, so you see maybe you now you see the difference between penetration testing and red teaming uh, and you might might ask yourself what is better okay and this is something i want to emphasize here um all that what i've said doesn't mean that red teaming uh, is better or i don't know more mature than penetration testing no it doesn't it doesn't mean that both security um, testing methodologies are perfectly valid uh, they are important uh, and should be used uh, in combination so that's that's a key thing here okay now if you need more measurable so to speak differences uh, here's an example division okay it's not perfect and I'll explain why in a minute so there are there are different categories you can put uh, to see where where are the differences uh, between the, the two you know between the penetration testing and red teaming lies um, and these are environment time scope and objectives so for the penetration testing usually it happens in non-production systems like de development testing some maybe quality sometimes it might be a production system as well but usually it's not non-production uh, it has a limited scope uh, so we are talking about like one application or one platform or few servers okay and to test them you have a few days maybe i don't know two weeks okay so your time is also uh, a significant factor here and your objective is to find as many uh, vulnerabilities or as many bugs as possible in that time frame now on the other hand red teaming is always production okay full scope with some exceptions that's um, that's possible so that when your when your customer says like okay um, for this particular engagement you cannot touch these I don't know 20 servers be because they are used for end of month uh, processing and they, this is very sensitive for our business so please do not include that in scope and it's uh, in, uh, excluded okay uh, as for time uh, it's usually weeks counted in weeks so it uh, it might be like four weeks eight weeks um, uh, something similar and the objective is always like so to speak uh, business centric so our objective is to steal intellectual property or some data like credit card data or personal information it might be money uh, it might be anything your customer wants okay and at this point we define what kind of scenario the customer is interested or the most concerned about uh, so by scenario i mean what kind of threat actor uh, red team should emulate uh, what kind of skills or capabilities that the threat actor should have and then we just define you know uh, the time frame and then that's it okay so these are uh two differences there is actually something else uh, on the red teaming side which is called long-term operations and this is when the red team is allowed to operate more than weeks uh, and we are more than weeks i mean like six months okay or it can be a, a year or even more uh, and this is really interesting project uh, i've been doing this for i don't know six six four six years uh, four, uh, four five six years uh, and it is slightly different uh, the way how you operate uh, during the long-term operation versus how you do your thing during red teaming is slightly different but i think i can i will yeah we, we can cover that that uh, subject on a, on a different episode so um let's back to this penetration testing versus red teaming thing so i mentioned that it's a the, this this is not perfect division because we do not live in a perfect world right so you can you, you can have you know pen test which lasts one month okay 
uh, or your scope is more broad than, than usually. That's perfectly fine. The bottom line is that I want you to have a sort of clear picture where this division, um, the line between this, you know, the line of distinction between red teaming and penetration testing lies. Okay, so, and and it's a perfect in a perfect world. So just keep in mind, uh, keep this in mind. So let's get back to Josh's question about what to do if there is no Active Directory on the network. And, and quite frankly, uh, the, his question is very important uh, because he points to a valid problem that we as a red teamers can come across during our operations. So from my experience, I can tell you that uh, it really highly depends on your team and your skill set or your capabilities you have in your team to be able to do that uh, such thing. So uh, I remember I was uh, once I was on an engagement uh, which lasted more than a year. Uh, so it was like long term operation and the team successfully operated in a target environment uh, without touching windows. Uh, I mean, there was Active Directory there, but uh, operation leader decided to check if you know the team can safely operate uh, for a longer period of time, you know, escalate privileges, uh, move laterally across the network, and still uh, being able to deliver the objectives uh, without being detected. Okay, so it it, it was possible. But as I said, uh, you have to be more creative in, in such scenarios uh, than usual. So that's red teaming uh, in comparison to pen, pen testing. And uh, once again, uh, I'd like to emphasize that it's how I, I see it. Uh, I, I see this concept and you can define it quite differently, uh, which is fine. Uh, I'm not here to, you know, preach or force you uh, to accept my view. Uh, I just want to share my opinion uh, on this. Okay. So I haven't touched a lot of ask, uh, aspects uh, of red teaming. Uh, and, and for example, I didn't mention that actually during the red teaming uh, uh, test, uh, during red teaming operations, we are not only focus on testing um, protection of the company, but also we assess the detection and response uh, of the organization or response capabilities of, of the organization. Um, I didn't I didn't tell you anything about what what kind of message to give back uh, to the company after the test. Okay, how to work with blue teams, uh, etc. It's there are there is a lot of things to discuss including uh, long-term operations but uh, that I think we we will uh, leave for for next time okay so thanks for watching uh, please leave your comments uh, below and you know what you think do you agree or disagree um, I'd love to to see your opinions okay so so yeah that's it um, stay tuned and see you next time